In this video, we're going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy A21 for beginners. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. If you want to stay up to date on all the mobile technology coming out and learn cool tips, tricks, and hidden features, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap the bell to turn on post notifications so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. Today we're going to walk you through how to use the Samsung Galaxy A21 for beginners. And we're going to start with the buttons. So on the left side of the phone you won't find any buttons, but you will find a SIM tray. If you're looking to put in a memory card that has old files on it or put a new memory card to store files, you will need to look for this tray. Use this little pin to pop out the tray and put in your memory card. On the right side of the phone, you will find your volume up, volume down, and your power standby button. Tapping this button quickly will turn on the screen. Tapping it again will put the screen to sleep. At the top of the, excuse me, at the bottom of the phone, you will find your headphone jack. You'll also find your type C charging port for charging your phone and the charger should be in the box and nothing on the top of the phone. Okay, so we're gonna tap the button to turn on the screen. And if you want to get into the phone, you have to do what's called a swipe. So again, tap, take your finger, put it on the screen and just drag your finger across the screen like this. That is a swipe and that will normally unlock the phone. In this case, we do have a password on the phone and this phone does have a fingerprint scanner on the back of the phone. So once you set that up, you can just take your finger and just tap and this will unlock the phone like that. Um, we'll walk you through how to set that up a little bit later on in the video, but for those of you that are just taking it out of the box for the first time, you simply just need to put your finger on the screen on the front and just drag it up and that will unlock the phone without you having to put a, a passcode in. Okay, so this is our main screen here. Now, on the main screen, there are three main buttons you'll use to control the phone. You'll have a home button in the center, this little sort of like circular button. To the left, you have what's called a recent apps button. It shows you all the apps that are running in the background of the phone. And to the right, you have the back button, which will take you back one step. So let me walk you through how these buttons work. So first, if we tap on this little icon right here. This is just an app. We tap on this, it'll take us into this particular app. If I wanna go back home to the main screen, I'm gonna tap on this little circle and that's gonna take me back to the home screen. Really easy. No matter what you're doing, even if you swipe over to another screen, if you tap on this circle, it always takes you back to your main screen or your home screen. So that's important to note. To the left here, this is your recent apps button. Now it's important to note, you have these little icons. These icons are called apps. Think of it like this. A computer has programs, phones has applications. And instead of calling them applications, we have you know shortened it to apps. So these are just little mini programs that run on your phone. So um, when you open up one of these little programs or apps, you open it, you'll read something or do something, and then you'll tap the home button to go back to the main screen. Now, when you come back to the home screen, it doesn't close out the app that you're using. The app still runs in the background of the phone. If you want it to close completely, you have to tap this button, the recent apps button. And this will show you all the different applications that are running in the background of your phone. And you simply just need to swipe up to close out these apps that are running in the back of your phone. So this is an easy way to speed up your phone and also to see different things that are running. You might find there was something you were doing earlier and you can go back to it by just going to that recent apps and swiping over and going back to whatever app you're working on. So that is, recent, uh, that is the recent apps button. Now this is a good segue into how the back button works. So right now we're in the settings. And let's say I'm in the settings app and I tap on connections. Maybe I'm trying to find something and I hit the wrong button. If I want to go back one step, I have an arrow in the corner of the screen here that I can use to go back. But I can also use this button down here, which is the back button. 
This will take me back one step. No matter what I'm doing, if I tap on something, if I tap on this little arrow, it'll always take me back one step. Now, if I go back one step and then I tap the button again, then it will just take me out of that app altogether. So this is just a great button to use if you ever need to go back to go back one step on whatever you're working on. These are the three main buttons you use to navigate the phone. Now next we have what is called the notification panel. If you take your finger, go to the top of the screen and swipe down. This will take you to the notification panel. This is where you get notifications for different things that are happening on your phone. For example, someone sends you a text message. It will show up in this menu here. Usually you can see a little preview of wherever the message is. Someone sends you an email. The email will show up in this section. You can just swipe up. Usually you can just swipe through this screen here to see different messages that are showing up. What will also show up are messages from other applications that you've downloaded on the phone. So you might have a WhatsApp or a Facebook message or an Instagram message. You'll be alerted and you can check that message in this section. Now at the top of this section, you'll have what is called your notification switches. Now these are shortcuts to different functions on your phone. For example, I just turned on the airplane mode. So if you're getting on an airplane and they say, hey, put all your electronic device in airplane mode, you would come here, tap on that button, and it would automatically switch your phone to airplane mode. I can tap it again, and then it will turn off the airplane mode. Now these are again just shortcuts to various functions on your phone. Now one thing that's kind of cool is if you, so we swipe down once, to get to this menu and if we swipe a second time it'll bring up more switches so your power saving mode your hotspot your quick share you can swipe to the left and you'll have a few more options so you have all these different switches that are just shortcuts to these important functions on your phone uh, you can also tap on this little uh, the three dots here and you can tap on button order and you can change the order of these little switches. Maybe you say, oh, I don't fly, so I don't care about the airplane mode. Put your finger on, you can drag it down to the bottom, and you can drag up, oh, but I do use the do not disturb a lot. So I wanna put that up there. Auto rotate, I don't care about that. Let's drag that down here. So you can change this order and make sure you have your most important apps right at the top. And when you're finished, tap done. Excuse me, I misspoke. Not your important apps, but your important switches. So this way, the first six will always show right at the top of the screen. So those are your notification uh, panel switches that control those functions. One other important note, you do have your Wi-Fi icon. So if you're trying to connect to your home Wi-Fi, you would just hold down on this icon here, make sure it's turned on and then look for your Wi-Fi network, tap on it and just type in the password, and that's it. You'll be set up and ready to go. Now I wanna go back, so I'm gonna use my back button here, and now I'm out of it. Now I can also swipe down, we do have a flashlight that you can use to make it easier for you to see. It just uses your phone's flash, it's our flashlight. And we have our Bluetooth icon, if you're trying to connect to Bluetooth headphones, you just tap on the Bluetooth icon to turn on Bluetooth, and then it will begin to look for new devices and try to connect to them. So that's a really easy way to connect to your new Bluetooth headphones. Okay, next what I wanna show you is how do you download new apps or applications? So you need to go to the Play Store. It's a little white icon on the home screen that has a play symbol. You're gonna tap on that. Now one important thing to note, you do need to have a Google account or a Gmail account signed in on the phone in order to use the Play Store to download anything on your phone. Anything, even a free application, you'll need to have a Google account set up on the phone. 
Now, I already had one on this phone, so it bypassed that whole step, but I wanna walk you through this step just in case you have not installed a Google account. So what you might see on your screen is a page that is saying for you to sign in first before you go to the Play Store, you'll tap on sign in, then you'll see a white screen that will say, please enter your Google account or your Gmail. On that screen, you would enter your, again, your Google email address or your Google account if you have a separate Google account set up. You'll put in that and the hit next, it'll take you to a password screen and then from there you'll enter your password and then it will sign you in. If you don't have a Google account and you don't have a Gmail account, it's totally fine. You will see a little option that says create account. Tap on create account and then it will allow you to put in your first name, last name, set up a Google account or a Gmail account, sign in, and then after all that, you'll approve a few options. It will take you to this screen. This is your Google Play Store. This is your digital online store where you can download games, apps, movies and TV shows, and books. These are the different things you'll find in this store. Now, one cool trick, at the top here, it says search for apps and games. If I tap on the microphone, instead of me having to type in what I wanna search for, I can just say it. So normally you would just tap in the box here. And when you tap in the box, it'll bring up the keyboard. So there's our little keyboard. I could type in whatever game I'm looking for or app. Or I can tap on the microphone and say Uber. it will read your voice and then do a search for whatever app you were looking for. I'm gonna tap install, this little green button here, and it will begin to download the Uber app to my phone. Super easy. Now, if you ever see that green button but it doesn't say install, instead it says a price, 99 cents, $9, $10, that's how you know the thing you've searched is not free. So keep in mind, if it's not free, it will ask you to add your credit card on file for you to make that purchase. So just keep that in mind. Most things are free. Most things will just show a green install button, but every so often you'll see a button that is not free and so I wanted you to look out for that. Now, the Uber app is downloading. As soon as it's finished, you would go home and just swipe up. This is your app section where you'll find all of your apps. And usually once you download a new app, it will show up on the last page and allow you to open it. So just we'll wait a little bit and you'll see Uber show up in this list. But this is where all the apps on the phone are found. Keep in mind at the top of the screen, you have all these folders. This is a Google folder with Google apps. This is a Microsoft folder with Microsoft apps. A Samsung folder with Samsung apps and a T-Mobile photo with T-Mobile apps. So that's where you'll find some of the extra apps that have been downloaded. Okay, so we just downloaded an app. The next thing I wanna show you is how to make a phone call and how to send a text message. So you're gonna to go to the phone icon in the bottom left corner here and make sure you tap on keypad. If you're not already on there, you'll see your buttons where you can then type it in to make your phone call. I'm just gonna put in some random numbers here. So type in your phone number and just tap on this little green button here and it will begin to make that phone call for you to try to connect to that person. That's how easy it is to make a phone call. Now, if someone's calling you, what you should see is a, a green circle and a red circle. Now, in most cases, you put your finger on the green circle and you drag it across and that's how you answer the phone. On different versions of this phone, instead of dragging, you just tap on the green icon and that will automatically answer the call for you. If you don't wanna answer the call, you can tap or drag on the red button and that will decline the call so it doesn't come to you. Now, if we go to our messages right here, I can tap on this little icon here to start a new message. And then I can type in my phone number, whoever I wanna call. And then I'm gonna tap in this box at the bottom here 
and then I'm going to enter my message. I'm going to say hi, whatever you want to put in that box. And then tap on this little circle here and that will send the message for you. That's how you send a text message. Now if you want to take pictures, swipe up, find your camera, tap on this little icon here to take pictures and videos. And then whatever picture you take, picture or video, you'll then need to go to the gallery app and this is where you'll find all the pictures that you've taken on the phone or video right in that section there. Now the very last thing I want to show you is how to transfer all of your information from your old phone to this phone. It's really easy on this phone. You're going to swipe down from the top of the screen. In the upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel. And we're going to swipe up all the way to accounts and then tap on smart switch, tap on download, and it's gonna to begin to download Samsung's best app ever, which is called Samsung Smart Switch. And it will allow you to bring over just about all of your important information from your old phone. Now on the old phone, you will also need to download the same app. And for that, you'll need to go to the Play Store, this little icon on your old phone, and do a search for Samsung Smart Switch and download that app and then as you open both apps it will walk you through some questions you need to answer and then it will ask you hey what do you want to transfer you'll select the appropriate things hit the transfer button and before you know it all your data will be transferred over to your new samsung galaxy h21 okay hope you guys found this helpful i try to be thorough and cover all the important items make sure you like favorite and share the video if it was helpful Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.